our money, Bristol International Speedway is the fastest half-mile track in the nation. It's wide, smooth, and features extremely high bank turns. The average half-mile oval lends itself to speeds of 70 to 80 miles per hour. Buddy Baker qualified his Ford yesterday on this track in a little over 17 seconds at a speed of 110.951 miles per hour. Usually, the lighter Chevrolets are favored on a short track, but here at Bristol, due to the banking, the heavier Fords, Dodges, and Mercury's run very strong. Buddy's fast time gives him the pole position in car 15, but he's got a running mate alongside in a Dodge number 43 by the name of Richard Petty, and that's enough to make any race interesting. On the inside of the second row, it's the Chevy 11. Cale Yarborough is the driver. He runs very good on this track and has won the race several times in the past. Alongside Cale is Benny Parson, this year's Daytona 500 winner, driving the King's Row Chevy number 72. In the third row, it's car 17, Daryl Waltrip, and number 90, Dick Brooks. Then followed by Dave Marcus and Cecil Gordon. Due to rain in the morning, the cars ran 23 laps under the yellow to dry out the track. When the green flew, Buddy Baker's Ford was the first car to climb up the high bank first turn. Richard Petty puts his Dodge in the second spot. Cale Yarbrough takes over third. At the end of the first lap, it's Baker, Petty, Yarbrough, with Betty Parsons fourth and Darrell Waltrip running fifth. Cale drops into the low groove and begins to challenge Petty. All he needs is a little daylight on the inside, and he'll own second place. In turn two, Cale finds just enough room for the nose of his car on the inside of Richard. And down the back chute, powers through to put the Valvoline Chevy in the number two position. Benny Parsons follows him through the hole to take over third. But Buddy Baker is out front and running strong. He's the boy they're going to have to catch. Already the trio of Baker, Yarborough, and Parsons have begun to lap the slower cars. Petty slipped back to fifth when Waltrip passed him on the back shoot. Now, Cale Yarbrough has his sights set on the lead as he begins to close the gap on Buddy's Ford. Again, Cale drops into his favorite low groove and starts knocking on the door. Baker tries to hold him off with Parsons in the pocket. Lap after lap, this threesome stays glued together. The crowd is standing and screaming. This red-hot trio is running away from everything on the track, including Waltrip and Petty, who are holding down on the fourth and fifth spots. In the second turn, Cale finds fight on the high side and passes Baker to take over the lead. Benny Parsons stays right on his rear bumper to grab the number two spot. In a matter of seconds, Buddy Baker slips to third place. David Sisko drops his 05 Chevy down on the apron and heads for the pits with a slashed left front tire. The 
Dale Yarbrough has all the horses working in his Valvoline Chevy 11 and starts to stretch second place Benny Parsons. Benny may be tiring, too. He suffered several bruises as a result of a bad accident at Rockingham just a couple of weeks before this race. Another caution flag flies when Henley Gray puts his Chevy on a spinner right down the front chute. He's all right, and so is the car. Meanwhile, the leaders take advantage of the yellow and head for the pits for fuel and rubber. Yarborough made this stop. He complained of a vibration in the rear end. Junior Johnson and the crew discovered a broken axle. The car that had been running away with the race is now out and parked behind the wall. With Kale now a spectator, the lead will be up for grabs, and it could be a Baker Parsons Petty battle. The green is out. They're running again. This time the leader is Benny Parsons. Petty is second in the Charger number 43. tires all the way around. Richard's Dodge is handling well and he begins to close on Parsons. On the 186th lap, Richard Brooks pulls his Ford into the garage with transmission problems and another hard charger is out of the race. In turn four, Petty sticks well in the low groove and moves up alongside Benny Parsons. Both cars are flat out and Richard wants the lead. The next trip around, he does it, and the Petty Dodge leaves the Southeastern 500 for the first time today. Darrell Waltrip dips his Chevy, and a driver switch is made. Darrell was involved in the same accident with Benny Parsons at Rockingham just two weeks ago. Now, with severe pain in his arm, he climbs out of the car, and Dick Brooks takes it back in the race. On the 200th lap, Walter Ballard's Chevrolet is pushed behind the wall with valve trouble. The field continues to shrink. Richard Betty is finding out that old Benny Parsons doesn't quit easy. He's challenging Richard on the outside and wants that lead back. Turn one, the King's Row Chevy is back in front. Petty is now second, and Dick Brooks is running very strong in Darrell Waltrip's Chevy number 17. This track is a rubber eater. Buddy Baker is now in for tires and a fill-up on fuel. The Parsons Petty duel goes on lap after lap. This time, Richard takes the high side and comes out of the front chute with the lead. Petty's car sounds better on every lap. He's picking up the pace in an all out effort to stretch his lead over Benny Parsons. race ground toward the checkered flag, Benny Parsons pitted his number 72 Chevy for rubber and fuel. It was a little longer stop than average and enabled Richard Petty to circle the oval and put him down one lap. Much of the time on Parsons' pit stop was consumed on another driver swap, the second one of the day. Walter Ballard, whose car was retired earlier, jumped into the white number 72 and headed out on the track. Due to his accident at Rockingham, Benny was completely exhausted and could no longer stand the punishment of this extremely fast and tiring half-mile track. But up to this point, he was a very strong competitor. With Parsons out of the race, Petty virtually has the track to himself. He's in the groove and running for the flag. 
Kings Row Chevy with Ballard aboard now is a distant second. Number 15, Buddy Baker is third. With Cease Gordon's Chevy number 24 running fourth. The white flag is out for Richard Petty. One more lap and he drives the big dodge into victory lane. comes out of the fourth turn and right down the middle of the front chute. Richard Petty wins the Southeastern 500, one of the most physically grueling races on the entire NASCAR circuit. The official finish is Richard Petty first in a Dodge. Benny Parsons with Walter Ballard aboard took second in a Chevy. Buddy Baker third in a Ford. Fourth place went to Cease Gordon, Chevy. Fifth, James Hilton, Chevy. And sixth, Darrell Waltrip's number 17 with Dick Brooks finishing for him, another Chevy. Outside of Petty and Baker, this sounds like a finish at a General Motors proving grounds. Without a doubt, the Chevys are making a strong comeback on the speedways of America. Still, the man in victory lane is Richard Petty. Stock car racing's winningest driver and the pride of Mopar. Today's checkered flag represented Richard's 166th career win. He is the man to reckon with on any track, any time, in any race.